All right, guys. So what are we going to do tonight? Tonight we are taking Mexico on a quick trip to Italy. Now, the marketplace, the new beautiful food destination place that I, my company, and my partner at Morongo Casino Resort and Spa are building, scheduled to open sometime late December, hopefully. Um, we are adding a bunch of very curated, beautiful, traditional venue, food destination venue from all over the world. Now, one of them, it's called Al Comal. Al Comal will be one of the feature food destination at the marketplace at Morongo. And Al Comal, for my friends, they are familiar with the uh, uh, Mexican, uh, uh, Mexican cuisine. The Comal is a gigantic reverse dome. It's like a dome with live fire underneath, usually found in, uh, in uh, very rustic eatery, a lot of backyard, a lot of street fair. And the Comal is a gigantic dome, like a steel um, hat, really, that you place things on and they cook as you witness that. So our restaurant, Al Comal, uh, is Mexican inspired. What I mean inspired? Inspires that the, the entire Mexican region but created from an Italian guy, there is also gonna be some twist. Tonight, we're gonna showcase one of those twists. Tonight, we're gonna make a guacaliano, which is a guacamole italiano. We're gonna omit few ingredients like devil's herb, cilantro, and we're gonna add a few other. And then we're gonna also do an Italian spin on a classic taco. Now, I love classic taco. There is nothing wrong with a classic taco. I love it. But once you try my tacos with Parmesan, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, the guacaliano, you are going to be sold. And although whether you're not going to probably leave behind any Mexican taco, you're going to add the Italian variety to your arrays of food selection coming from that region with a twist. All right, so now... The first things that we have to figure it out here is that, Emily, I want to make sure that um, anytime there is a question, and no, I said cilantro, meaning we're not going to use cilantro. I get, I get, I get like rushes just mentioning that, that foul, nasty herb. I hate cilantro. For the one that don't know me well enough, there is not many things that culinary speaking bothers me. Um, cilantro is definitely one of them. I wouldn't eat snail. I'm not going to eat snail. I'm not going to eat cockroaches or spiders or crickets. Not doing that. But I would rather eat a damn tarantula than eat cilantro. Swear to God. All right. Now, the first things we're going to do in order to make guacaliano is to make sure that we get an avocado that is actually good. All right. So with that said, if you have questions throughout the next 30, 45 minutes, please type them in the chat and we are going to discuss it or debate it. Because I know there is already some comment about, uh, you know, uh, I love cilantro, I hate cilantro too. If you love cilantro, <laughs> you look like you had a problem. I don't care. I hate it with a passion. Like I am the CEO of IHateCilantro.com. I just, it's, it's, a, it's an abomination. It's an insult. Of, on any fresh herb out there. Now, here's what we're gonna do. To make a great guacaliano, you have to get good avocado. And there's only one way to figure it out that you're not about to get screwed up with an avocado. Avocado is like a summer love story. It doesn't last very long. It's great. I mean, till it lasts, beautiful. But it's like June, you're all in love and can July come, who's you? you guys don't know each other anymore because avocado goes bad really fast. And there is one quick tip that I can give you to figure it out how to look for a great avocado. Avocado comes with a pit. If you remove the pit like this, look at that bright green. See that bright green? You know that this is good. If that's bright green, you know it's a good avocado, all right? 
Now there are some other avocado that are could possibly be still be good, but look at the difference. See the difference? One is bright green, and this just seems pretty green too. But but look at the pit. That means that probably it's brewed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get two avocado in which the pit it's bright green. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this here. We're gonna roll it across our knife. We're gonna flip it. Yeah, it never fails. The pit color never fails. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna smack the, the pit with the knife. Careful, don't wanna chop your hand off. I gotta do a disclaimer, do not try this at home. Although with virtual, the whole point is really to try everything at home. Just don't do it, do whatever, just use a spoon. I'm reckless and I'm a world-class chef. I don't care, I can do this, all right? Look, go like this, bam, flip it, take the avocado pit out. Now. Fabio, quick question. Please. Dina wants to know what part of Italy you are from. Dina, I am from Tuscany, Florence. I was born and raised under the Tuscan sun, Dina. Bam, two out of two. Look at that. Feel like I'm Italy in the, in the Olympics, gold medal. Look at this, fantastic, all right? So now also, if you are a person that is very sensitive about the whole COVID distancing, not sharing, all that, Avocado is a great treat for individual serving of guacamole. Let me show you how. First of all, you got you to gotta make sure that you are putting the green parts in the, in the bean here, like this. So you go here, right? Get the green part there. But then look, you basically have an individual, you have an individual serving size cup now put your back your guacamole back into the tin and now if you have a friend that is a little bit of a germaphobe doesn't like double dipping doesn't like to share doesn't like people just give his own size his own portion or portion now of guacamole guacaliano look at that this thing who invented this i did i never heard just thought about it look at that perfect so Fabio. now then and of course what we have to do we have to keep adding the, the, the avocado to the bowl so we can add other ingredients and make it guacaliano like this, right? So now here, actually, I'm going to squeeze that. Fabio, we have a couple questions about the knife. People want to know what you call that type of knife. All right, let me, let me get to you. So here's this knife. This knife is a Japanese cleaver Japanese cleaver this is about a two and a half pound knife it's pretty heavy Japanese cleaver virtually impossible to break um, you got to keep it sharp of course it's a heavy knife so the heaviness of the knife will make you hit things a little harder than you should so you got to keep it very sharp and this is Damascus steel something like this is probably a few hundred bucks and you can find something similar, not these. This was made, um, this was made on spec by me. Because um, when I chop things, see, I, I hold it like this. See, I go like this. When I chop things, I go like this. See, look. Um, this was made by me by a dude on Etsy. I feel like Etsy, it's like a flea market for artists. A lot of very hipster, creative people that do beautiful things with arts and crafts and things. And a, a, a dude out of Ohio, I think, got me this beautiful knife. Um, so now, what do we do here? How do we make a guacaliano? First of all, you got to use cherry tomato, not tomatillo. You got to use basil instead of the devil's herb. And uh, we're going to use a little bit of uh, green onion tops for the, the flavoring part instead of white onion, all right? So let's get to it. Here's what we're gonna do. We got the guacamole inside here. I'm sorry, we got the avocado inside. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the pinch of salt to it. Pinch of salt. I'm going to add some good olive oil to it. Olive oil will saturate the guacamole and make it harder to go black. All right. Then what we do here, I'm going to get the green onion like that. I'm going to cut some of the tops. Now, first of all, when you have these kind of tops here, right, with these, you should save these. Chop them up like a half inch, put them in a Ziploc bag, and put them in the freezer. These are absolutely delicious because these are fantastic. Look at this. These are fantastic when you make soup. These are fantastic when you make uh, broth as a shallots, green onion uh, kind of flavoring, right? A light sense of an onion. Absolutely delicious. Um, now, what we're going to do here for the guacaliano, we are going to use not the white part. We're going to use the greenish part, and we're going to use about an inch of it out of two bundle. Like this. There, right? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go right here, there. Then we're going to get beautiful cherry tomato. These are, um, these are Bull's Hearts cherry tomato. They come from my backyard. Um, cherry tomato bought at a grocery store. They do the job too. They just don't taste like these. These are absolutely delicious. I have like 100 tomato plants in the back. And these are the little Bull's Hearts uh, bull's horse tomato cherry drop you can call it whatever you want so what we do here we got a little bruise on it so what i'm going to do with these it's very simple we're going to cut these in half and then half again half like these and then half again right like that and i'm going to add these to the guacaliano half and i wouldn't even worry about seeding them who cares just go like that all right, go like these. Cherry tomato, big slice of cherry tomato is the key, the way to go. Like that, all right? Like that. You go in there. And then what we're gonna do, instead of putting, instead of putting cilantro, which is gonna ruin everything, we're gonna put basil, fresh basil. Like this, few leaves of basil, like that. Look at that, beautiful, fresh, smells delicious. Look at that. By the way, by the way, in summertime, just so you know, especially if you live in the burbs like I do, if you slap yourself with basil like this, aside from looking like an imbecile, you're gonna keep the bugs away. You look like an imbecile. Think about it. You're like right outside a grocery store. You're excited about the tips and you start to smack yourself with basil. People are going to be like, look at this imbecile. But then you know who the imbecile is? All those people going home and getting beat by bugs because basil, aside from making you smell like a, like a Zeus of Italy, it, it makes, it's a, one of the most potent bugs repellent one of the best way and now clearly don't put this in the guacaliano now one of the best way to keep a italian vegetable garden bugs free only beneficial bugs ladybugs and um, man mantids i don't know um i don't know how you call them they have like they look like killers they, they have little how do you call it those um Praying mantis. I think it's, the name is praying mantis. I think it's praying mantis. They're beneficial bugs. And get like frogs and all beneficial stuff that eat the nasty bugs. You put every other vegetable plant, you plant a little plant of basil, lavender, rosemary, and mint. They attract bees. They repel wasps. And they repel all those nasty bugs. So although you might going to look like an idiot, just slapping yourself all over with, with basil, then you're going to be the one that outside enjoy without getting bugs bite. Beautiful, beautiful tips. You're welcome, by the way. Somebody should post these on Facebook. So now 
Uh, Here's a quick question. Please. Uh, Laura wants to know what else you grow. Laura, what do I don't grow? I grow 50 different type of tomato, um, 30 different type of tomato, 50 different type of vegetable. I got eggplant. I got zucchini, five different kinds. I got three different kinds of broccoli. I got 10 different kinds of peppers from hot spicy to super sweet. I got cabbage, napa, green, purple, white. I got cauliflower, I got strawberries, I got snow peas, snap peas, sweet peas, and string bean. I got the I got the Carolina Reaper, Carolina Reaper pepper, impossible to grow in the United States. I got it. I grow my own gochujang. Go go to jang, go to jang. Sorry if there is any Korean friend, I just butcher your homegrown peppers. I make my own kimchi, I grow the kojujang peppers. Um, I grow everything. I'm like, I'm like, I'm literally like the God of vegetable. I am the ultimate dad garden. It's, it's unbelievable. So now let's get the basil here. All right. Let's get basil there inside. Now the last things, lemon instead of lime. You can call it guacaliano if you have lime. Lemon, it's Italian. In Italy, we don't have a lot of limes, all right? So, but we got lemons. So you put lemons, that makes it Italian. So years ago, just a little squeeze of lemon inside. See that? Then, bam. So now what do we do? Now, we get something like this, which I have no idea about the name. I think this is called potato smasher or, or the, the blade of something i feel like um edward scissor scissor hand barbara said it's a pastry cutter a pastry cutter I, <laughs> How do you or a it? butter ross said it's a butter cutter butter cutter pastry cutter wow okay um great good for you guys i have no clue what this is what i do with this it's a guacaliano maker i'll show you check this out ready you go like this and you smash the guacaliano with it. Look at that. Now, the avocado mostly gets smashed. The tomato, they don't get really smashed, but that's not the plan, all right? Look at that. I like to keep my guacaliano pretty big because I like to see... Look at that, beautiful. That's all I need to... That's all I need here. Look at this. All right, so now what do we have? So now I have a chunky, a chunky guacaliano, basil instead of the devil's herb, cherry tomato instead of tomatillo. We have lemon instead of lime, and we have avocado because of, there is no replacement for avocado. Look at that. Now, here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do, I have a, a, a 12 inches pan on the fire, all right? I'm going to turn the fire fairly high. This thing is going to burn. I want it nice and hot. I want it nice and hot because the meat, the meat has to sear like super hot. If, if your meat boils, then you're going to get a crappy taco. The meat, it's got to sear. Sear. Brown, crispy outside, juicy inside. If your meat boils, boils like you're like simmering in a bunch of broth because the meat released the, the, the juices, then you're going to have a crappy taco. All right? So now let's do this. Here's what I got. I got two chunks of meat. One and two. All right. Cut this in half because a little too long. There. Strips. 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 And strips. Why am I cutting my meat in strips? I'm cutting my meat in strips. 
because then I want to cut it in cubes. So look, strips, 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 and strips. And now I'm cutting these in cubes. Fabio, what is, the, what is the cut of meat that you're using? So we're making tacos, right? So I feel like everything goes. Flank steak, hanger steak, chuck, blade, top round, shoulder, it's okay. As long as it's not thicker than an inch, you can get away with it, all right? So look, look at that. So here's what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna dice all this meat. The pan is nice and hot. Pan is actually really hot. It's smoking. I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but the pan is actually smoking right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. And this is gonna be quick, right? I'm gonna season the meat quickly. Look at that smoke. Look at that smoke on the pan. You can see a smoking now. Look at that. You see the smoke? It's empty. There is nothing in it, right? Look at that. There's really nothing in it. All right, I'm gonna get garlic powder on the steak. Turn on a little hood here. Garlic powder, salt, pepper. Look at that. A little bit of rosemary. Use prick of rosemary. Look at that. Look at that. Use prick of rosemary. And now, a little bit of olive oil. And bam, I'll show you what we do. Just a touch of olive oil, though, right? Like this. Because you don't want too much oil, because you don't want the steak to, uh, you don't want the steak to get, um, to get too wet. Ready? Look at that. Now in the super hot pan, I'm gonna let it like this. I'm gonna let it sit right here. Fabio, quick question. Please. Does cutting it small help with the toughness that usually occurs with flank steak? Flank steak is not tough. Shouldn't be tough. Um, but yes, of course, the smaller you cut it, the less chewy it's going to be, clearly. But yes, so it will help. A flank steak should not be tough. Top round and chuck, usually a little tougher because it's very lean. Flank steak shouldn't be. My loyal, my loyal wooden spoon. Great wooden spoon is a great mood adjustment device in Italian household. It's the tool of the ages. By the way, we're doing Mexican food tonight. So I know that my friends in Mexico, they also use these. They also use the, the shoe. I had a Mexican grandmother. I, I learned how to do a bunch of Mexican dishes with. Every time she got pissed, she used to throw shoes on me with a, with a taco, with a, the big wood bottom. Amazing woman. So now look, the key here, the key here, let me show you, is not to make the meat get too wet, all right? So you're gonna see that there is a little bit of a natural water underneath. See that? That's fine. You can't make it too wet. Can't do too wet. All right. So I'm going to let it super high fire and I'm going to let this cook like that. Look at that. See how nice it's caramelizing and see if, if you see here, you see that there is very little water underneath, but the water is not taking over the pan. It evaporates before, look at that. The water evaporates before It gets to puddle. 
Look at that. It's important, all right? It's important for uh, the steak not to sweat. In the what? South, it's the flip-flops. Yes, in the South, they use flip-flop shoes. <laughs> My mom used to throw shoes at me all the time. Fabio, so, Laura wants to know if they have tasty Mexican food at Morongo. Say that again? Do they have tasty Mexican food at Morongo? Do they have tasty Mexican food at Morongo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will, for sure. Al Comal is not open yet. And I am sure, and this maybe is more for Simon to answer. I don't know if you guys have, do you guys have a Mexican restaurant there right now? I know you have a great Asian restaurant. Um, I know you have a fantastic steakhouse. The whole culinary team of Morongo is stellar, stellar. But I don't know about Mexican. I'm not sure. Actually, if, hey, Fabio, Simon. Yeah, if, if yes. you head over to our food court, we have Fiesta Taco, uh, which, fantastic. Is, which is fantastic. Shane uh, Driver, a great place. Handmade beautiful taco. Shane Driver came to the rescue saying, yes, Fiesta Taco. There you go. Shane, my man, I'll see you soon. September September 13 and 14, I'm there, right? Yes, September right. 14. Right. All right, guys, let's look in the pan. Look what's happening here. You see there is very minimal water. It's important. Look at that. You see the caramelization there? Look. Look at that. The meat is getting brown, but it's not getting dry, which is the most important thing. If the meat is getting dry, it's no bueno. And no bueno, it's Mexican for that's messed up. All right? Look at that. Now, here's what we got. Very important. Look at this. Off. Done. I'm going to let it finish to sip, to, to stew a little bit in its own, uh, in its own heat. Look at that. Beautiful. Fabio, Beautiful. real quick. You have Please. a couple people asking if that is a cast iron pan. No, that it is not. That is a... Um, that is a hard anodized pan. It's coated with a non-stick layer of hard anodized, and it is metal utensil friendly. It's done by a company I used to endorse, and although I don't get paid to say this anymore, I meant it every time I said it. Great pans. It's called Bialetti. B I A. L-E-T-T-I. I still use them today. Non-paid promotion. They are good people with a great product. I like them better when they used to pay me to say that, but I still love them to pieces. They're great, great people, great product. All right. And the only reason why I like them better is because I was getting paid, clearly. But I still love the product. Excellent cookware. All right, guys. So the meat is ready. So now let's get to the build of the taco. I don't build my tacos until I have all the ingredients ready, all of them. If you don't have all the ingredients ready, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You got to get your mise en place, which is a French way to say, get your stuff ready in front of you. Mise en place. Put the things in place. I don't speak French. I used to. I used to be fluent in French. And I used to actually speak German, Italian, clearly I was born there, German, because a, a school, um, it's, it's German sound, you really sound like you're really upset when you're talking, but the teacher was adorable. I loved her, loved her. And, and I took classes German, because I, I, I just wanted to hang out with her. Had no reason to take German, learned very little, and, and probably got like few sentences in German. And I was fluent in French, came to the United States, Nobody care about French and German, zero care for French and language German. Clearly Italian, I picked up Spanish before, now I'm fluent in Italian. I speak decent Spanish and I still am half there. I'm half there with English. So now what do we do? Mise en place is the only French things I remember how to say. And mise en place is what we're gonna do right now. First of all, jalapeno. There is a trick to shave your jalapeno 
without getting bothered by the seeds. First of all, second of all, save the jalapeno seeds because you want to grow your own jalapeno plant. These things are like weeds. Everybody loves jalapeno and they're so that if you literally get a damn jalapeno, cut these things in half, take three seeds, throw it in your front lawn, in 90 days, you got a plant of jalapeno. They're that easy. But that's a, this is how you peel them. Ready for this? First of all, you don't chop them in round. That's, that's for amateurs. You shave the jalapeno from the top to the side. Bam! And again. Hey, Fabio, we have a quick question. Please. Claudia is asking, her steak made a lot of water. What should she do? Get a scuba diving mask and start praying, Claudia. <laughs> so um, here's the problem. First of all, I would like to low-key acknowledge how I made, I cleaned this entire jalapeno without bothering a single, single seed. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to Claudia. You know, but for real people, like if there is any Mexican watching, you're welcome. Like for your entire existence, you're slicing jalapeno. Look at this. I will never claim I have better tacos than you guys. Clearly you win. I just know how to slice jalapeno better than most people. Look at that. Look at this. Perfect. Now you can look at this. There is not a damn look on the cutting board. Look. Look at this thing. There is not a single seed on the cutting board. I'm like, I'm like, call me jalapeno master from today on. Every time you see me, it's like, yo, what's up, jalapeno master? Look at that. I got 30 points of jalapeno. I don't need more jalapeno. Throw it away. Now, Claudia, your steak, water for two reasons and two reasons only. Number one, you didn't listen. You didn't let the pan heat up enough. It had to be hell hot, like lava hot. Hotter than that, you're right at the gate of hell. It had to be on flame. The pan had to smoke. Or number two, you crowded the pan too much. That's the only two reasons why the water is steak. So what I suggest you to do is to tilt the steak and get rid of all the water and keep cooking the steak until you get a nice crisp. Your steak will be a little chewy, Claudia, but... I guess better than no tacos. Next time, you know. Now, we got the jalapeno. When I said, first of all, we got sour cream. I wanted to make, I wanted to make Italian tacos. And I went like, all right, fine. Sour cream is very, sour cream. See, Claudia said, yes, too much steak, too much meat. I told you. And this it doesn't prove that I'm actually always right. But this proves that it's one of those two reasons, just too much shit in the pan, too many steaks, or too much steak, or too hot, or not hot enough. So now let's get back to the sour cream. I keep sour cream in my Italian taco because what I did, what I did was, what I did was, yes, Claudia, the recipe called for two pound, but don't put two pound all at once. You see what I mean? You could have put a half and if it's too much, too much. Common sense is something that I can never teach. You can't buy, you're not born with it, and you gotta really look forward. Sorry. All right, so let's talk about sour cream. I want it to be really fancy. I was like, all right, all right, fine. My tacos, it's gonna have mascarpone inside with a little bit of lemon juice. Fine. Taste the mascarpone, lemon juice, put the taste together, taste like sour cream. I'm like, I'm like, then screw it. I'm going to use sour cream. Tastes like sour cream. Might as well I use sour cream. It's a step less. Celebro, which means brain in Spanish, which means you got to be smart. You can't do three extra steps and then it tastes the same thing. All right. So now, sour cream, jalapeno, green onion. Look at this. Let me shave me some green onion. There, green onion. Then I got basil leaf. I got the guacaliano. Look at this perfect little onion. I grew this too. This is perfection of onion. 
Onion perfect. Look at this. Ready? Look at that. Little slice. Super thin. Super thin. Super thin onion. Right? Look at that. Super thin onion jalapeno. Now let's get to the tortilla. Unless you are completely, unless you got nothing to do, nothing. You have no reason to make your own tortilla. There is so many delicious tortilla made by so many local businesses. I have at least a dozen of fantastic tortilla factory here in Chicago. I have no intention whatsoever to make my own tortilla. Can I do it? Yes, masa harina, water, salt, I know it. Prese, I get it, I can do it. I don't want to. I'd rather to buy $3, 7,000 tacos, shell, the, the tortillas you buy literally. They're so cheap. With $10, you buy like 90,000 tortilla here in Chicago. And, and I rather support a local family that makes tacos because it make tortilla because that's what they've done the whole life. There is no virtual, not pun intended, there is no virtual reason to make your own tortilla unless you want to brag about it. But then if you can do it, you ain't bragging. So now look at this. What am I doing here? I'm going to show you exactly what am I doing. Ready for this? This is the most important move of the night. Cook tortilla on fire. First of all, if any Mexican friend of mine that I have knows that you are heating up your tortilla in the microwave or toaster oven, they will probably get very upset. Look at that. They were going to get really, really, really upset. All right. Get these things on the stove. Flip it. Unless you're a professional chef, you're probably going to burn yourself doing so. So use a pair of tongs. Don't try to be a hero, all right? You can use a pair of tongs or not, or you do what I do, right? Look at that. Bam. Then get a plate. Here's what we're going to do now. Get yourself a plate. There. There. And there. Let's build these together, all right? Hey, First Fabio. and foremost, please. A couple of questions for people that don't have a gas stove. How do you suggest they do tortillas? Uh, if you don't have a gas stove, I am just going on a limp here. You probably have a, an electric burner or an induction burner. If you don't have an electric burner and because the induction doesn't cook without a pan on it, you can use a pan, heat up the pan and heat up the tortilla in the pan. If you have an electric, just slam it on the glass. Just don't use a toaster oven. That's for American things. Every time somebody heat up tortilla in the microwave or in the toaster oven, there is a, 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 there is a Mexican grandmother that does backflip in their grave. Don't do it. It's like Italian grandma, they do just backflip, like golden medal Olympic kind of backflip every time an American person puts cheese on seafood linguine. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't. So heat up your tortilla with a pan on the stove, on the fire, or in the pan on induction. Toasted oven, it's for toast and bagel. Now, let's build this together. The first things I'm going to do, I'm a spreader, all right? I like to spread. I don't like a dollop. I don't like a pop, like a little like ice cream scoop. I don't like canal. That's French. I'm a spreader. I like to spread. So let's spread. Get your sour cream and spread it, right? Like that. Like that. There. That's what spreaders do. Second, guacaliano, because that's important. You have to put the guacaliano on, right? There, look at these gorgeous things there. And there, right? 
then then jalapeno what we're going to do with the jalapeno let me show you you get this beautiful jalapeno you slice few leaves and the reason why is because we're going to put them like this this is a mind-blowing revelation for you guys you got to understand this who puts who puts round slice of jalapeno two round slice of jalapeno in a taco it's criminal it's criminal because i might take a bite you know you know you take a bite of the damn things and now you got a wheel pinwheel of jalapeno with nine seeds in your mouth and you're gonna be like oh, it's really hot oh my god this jalapeno is really hot it's not hot you got it and this proportion amount of jalapeno in your mouth. This is the right way to do it. Anything else? It's amateurs. Sleeves of jalapeno. Sleeves of jalapeno. All right. Now, red onion. Red onion. It's important because red onion is what makes Italian. Look at that. Couple of red onion. Look at that beauty there. Not too much, right? Just couple. Look at that. Be a red onion. Look at that. Nice. Nice. Look at it. Look at that. Red onion. Absolutely delicious. Now, I like a lot of red onion. So I'm going to put a little bit more. And now I'm going to add a little bit of the green onion, too. Because green onion is good for a crunch. And it tastes like a mild shallots. Look at that. All right. So now then we go to the steak. Steak, it's important. It's one of the most important things. It's a steak taco. Now, before you do these, here's what I'm going to do. Before you do these, I'm going to get very, very good olive oil. And I'm going to wet my steak again with olive oil. And I'm going to sprinkle another little bit of, uh, another little bit of garlic powder on it. Fabio, why garlic powder, not real garlic? First of all, garlic powder is real garlic that has been dehydrated. Second of all, it's better for seasoning. It spreads better. If you put a chunk of garlic, now you get the same thing as the jalapeno. You get a chunk of garlic. Look at that. All right. So now we're going to put the steak there. There. And there, there, all right? So now what do we do? Leaf of basil, it's important because it's a guacaliano. If it was Mexican taco, you would have put the devil's herb. Nope, we're gonna put these because it's a guacaliano. Then what do we do? Parmesan cheese, ready? Look at that. Parmesan cheese. I know that you guys wish that the marketplace at Morongo was already open, but it's not. You got to drool until December, and then I'm going to all see you there. And we're going to do a bunch of Italian tacos together. We're literally going to cheer, drink, and be merry together. In person, like it's 2019. Let's go. Now, Fabio, we have a few questions. Please. While you're on the subject of marketplace, Edith was asking if you can share any dishes to look forward to at market. Yes. All you have to do, um, all you have to do is to go to Instagram, follow me, Fabio Viani, follow the marketplace. Um, and we're going to start to post food picture very soon. Unfortunately, aside from glorious meatball, delicious steak, and these tacos that we're doing it virtually together, you'll have to wait a little bit because we're, teas we're big teas. We're like big teas. Like, we're going to dance for five months before we even kiss. We're teasing. Right now, it's all about the hype. Right now, we're developing menu. 
I'm getting yelled at it by Shane Driver, which I know is watching. I don't like these. I love these. Change these. Let's do that. Right now, it's like the, the survival of the fittest. Right now, we're tasting like hundreds of dishes so we can bring to you the best of the best of the best. So for you that you want to know, you got to check us online. You got to follow me. You got to stay in touch. And then you're going to be in the know. What's the next question, Emily? Um, Russ is asking where they can find the scheduled list of the, the next Morongo virtual sessions. When is it scheduled? Where can we find the scheduled list? The scheduled list, it's you got to follow me on Instagram. Uh, the scheduled list is that since you are on these email blasts, because clearly if you are here right now, that means you are in our list. We will send you. There is a class a month until November. Um, Simon, what is the calendar? I figure I should know, but I don't because I don't read memos. I don't do that kind of homework. Okay, CNO.com. Say that again. You'll be able to find Morongo Casino Resort.com under, under dining. There's a whole section for Chef Fabio Viviani, and you'll be able to find the schedule on there. The next one is September 26th. September 26th. There you go. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's why I got the best people around me because I'm like, <laughs> I have no way of knowing most of this information. I just show up, cook some food, make it great, high five, bam. I like it. So now let's talk about balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is like God's essence in a bottle. These things is currency in Italy. There was a time in history that if you have balsamic vinegar, it's like Bitcoin right now. You got dough, all right? You could buy things with this. You could barter. You could literally get your way out of getting killed in like 500 years ago in Italy if you have good balsamic vinegar. That's the nectar of the gods, the Italian gods. So let me show you what we do with the nectar of the gods. We're going to add it to the tacos, like bam, bam, and bam. Look at that. Look at that. That is absolutely bonkers, crazy good. Look at the tacos. People of all age, look at this. I don't care if you're 10 or 110. Maybe if you're 110, you're going to have problems chewing the tacos. But aside from that, these, it's fantastic. Look at this, gorgeous tacos, guacaliano, guacamole italiano, enough of cilantro. Seriously, people, moving on. It's like checker shirt. It's like play. That's a, moving, moving on. You got to move on. There was a time in history that was not frowned upon. Move on. Like there is something better out there. Basil, tarragon, literally anything. Wood chips is better than cilantro and tacos. Look at this thing. Great Parmesan cheese, Reggiano. I saw somebody made a comment. Reggiano is always better because come from Italy. You want to get Parmesan cheese from Wisconsin, I want to give a shout to all my peeps in Wisconsin. You guys got great cheeses out there. But Parmesan is where cheese wants to be when it dies and go to heaven. And it has to come from Italy because you can't have Parmesan or Reggiano from Wisconsin. You got great cheddar. Can you imagine what terrible cheddar cheese you would get from Italy? No, cheddar cheese, Wisconsin, Parmigiano Reggiano, Italy. Look at that. These things is bonkers. I'm going to have a bite right now. Fabio, you have a couple questions about the balsamic. Is it, is it just vinegar or is it a glaze? It's balsamic. It's reduced balsamic. Glaze is cheating. All right. Glaze, balsamic glaze is cheating. Balsamic glaze is cooked down balsamic vinegar. They usually they add corn syrup. Age balsamic vinegar takes 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, 50 years to reduce and evaporate. All right. This is the real deal. I don't, I don't cheat on vinegar. I don't cheat in general, but on vinegar, especially you can't, it's like a three store version of aged balsamic vinegar. Can't do it. What's the next question? I'm going to have a taco. Um, you had a couple of people asking what brand of balsamic you like. Wow. Good stuff. Good 
There's a couple of very good brand. Though. This is one. Monati, very good. Federonzi, Federzoni, I'm sorry. Monati, Federzoni. Um, honestly, guys, go to Whole Food, go to your Giant Eagle Market District grocery store, go to Wegmans, go to uh, Publix in Florida, go to the balsamic vinegar section, get an expensive bottle of balsamic vinegar, flip it. Make sure there is no crap like corn syrup. That's probably the best you're going to get here. Mm. Wendy is asking if you have a recommendation for a side dish that would go well with these tacos. Side dish for tacos? I... Wendy. What side dish? This is like a, it's like a steak. You get broccoli on the side. It's a taco. Russ said rice and beans. Rice and bean with taco, guys. Okay, sure. I mean, you can get a cheesecake side with taco. I mean, at this point, I guess we're just saying something for just the sake of saying something. But um, I don't know, Mexican corn, maybe? Well, I don't know. I'm going to flip the question. What would you eat as a side with taco? And why do you need a side with taco? There's guacaliano. There's a, there's a bunch of things on it. If you're hungry, er, if you're more hungry, get more tacos. That's the whole point of tacos, right? What would Everyone you is saying it? alcohol, margaritas, beer. <laughs> I mean, drinking, yes. Margarita, great. Cold beer, a good michelada. Ooh, like a gallon michelada. Mm. Guys. Absolutely delicious. All right, listen up. Salad and a glass of med. Cheryl. I have no idea what a glass of med is, but. I just learned about it's mead. I just learned about this for the first time myself. What is it? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. I, yeah, there it is. Honey wine. It's honey wine. Honey wine with tacos. Yeah. Okay. I learned about that in Northern Michigan at a winery. Hey, you know what? Tell you what. If everybody was like me, America would have got along just fine. You know why? Because I hate pineapple on pizza. I hate pineapple on pizza. I think it's actually stupid. But guess what? Do you like it? Good for you. You do you, boo. I don't care. I'm not going to try to tell you to ban pineapple for the rest of existence because me and another 50 people hates it. I don't care. You do whatever you want. You want to get a mid, do you want to get honey, honey wine with tacos? I think it's a terrible idea, but you do you. If you like it, I would love to try it. So then I can confirm that I hate it, the idea, or tell you, you know what? I was wrong. It's actually really makes no sense, but it's actually really good. Guys, if you like it, do it. Who cares? Who cares? Not that you're coming to my house, you shove it down my throat. I don't care. All right, guys, listen up. Morongo, casino, resort, and spa. It is the destination. You guys have no idea how awesome this place is from the, you know, the tribe behind to the people running the venue at a daily level, the service, the chefs, the, the dealers, everybody's like top of their game in hospitality. I could not be more excited to partner with them and bring you guys the marketplace. These things is insane. We're not even trial blazing here. We are reinventing an entire category. We are getting the old dime buffet that nobody cares for. And we're turning that space into a food mecca. Seven, eight different concept cocktail wine, oyster bar, steakhouse, Italian, Spanish, road barbecue, 
south of the border, the Zer station. I think I left something out. Who cares? You guys got to come and see us. I appreciate you coming, gun blazing for this class too. What are we going to do next class? What are we doing next? Do we know? Anybody? Emily? Simon? What do we do? You're waiting for me. You're not going to know right now. <laughs> I'm looking. Come on, somebody. What are we doing? Uh, that one is the desserts. Ricotta desserts. fritters and tiramisu. I'm going to show you how to make my mom tiramisu. And we're going to do ricotta fritters next month. <laughs> and it's perfect because it's September. So you're not going to screw up your bikini season. This is like, oh, my God. We're going to have so much fun. Guys, please make sure that share the subscription link with everybody. We want to see all your family, friends on these classes. We have so much, we have so much fun. And uh, I want to say thank you, guys, as always. I got two more tacos to go before I go to bed. Actually, two more taco and a cold beer before I go to bed. And thank you, guys. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay free. I can't wait for the next class. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Love you all. And I will see you guys soon. Cheers.